In this video, we'll be going through some of the excellent questions we've received from the last lecture on what is an asthma attack. A really important question is why or how do asthma attacks kill patients? And to understand that, you really need to think a little bit about what happens during an asthma attack. Now, when you breathe in, you're generating a negative pressure inside the chest. And so you're allowing the lungs to expand up and therefore to drag air in because you're creating a pressure difference between the mouth, which is at relatively higher pressure, than inside the lung, which is at a relatively lower pressure because you've expanded the chest and you've flattened the diaphragm. So that draws air in. In asthma, the airways are narrow, but it does allow for air to come in. But then, when you try to breathe out, what you try to do is increase the intrathoracic pressure by f relaxing the diaphragm and squashing the lungs and relaxing the chest wall and allowing it to collapse in on itself, thus squeezing the lungs to push air out. It's during this squeezing or pushing of the lungs that the narrowing of the airways cause them to completely collapse and so you get air trapping inside the lungs. So if you imagine you can take a breath in but you can't take a breath out, each time you breathe you're just going to bring more and more air into the lungs, expanding it more and more. So it's worth thinking about it in terms of a balloon in a bottle. So when you take a breath in you fill up those lungs so the balloons start to fill up the bottle. Now if you can't expel that air the balloons are just going to keep filling up the bottle or the chest wall more and more and more until they just can't fill up anymore. So now you're not getting air into the lungs and you're not getting air out of the lungs. And because you can't get air in or out of the lungs, your oxygen levels start to drop because you're not getting any new air with oxygen in it into the lungs. So that's partly why patients become so unwell and their oxygen levels start to drop is because they're just not able to move gas in and out of the lungs. Also, if you imagine you've really increased the pressure inside the chest, what else sits in the chest? Well, the heart does, and the heart is responsible for pumping blood all the way around the body. But if the heart is being squashed by the high pressure in the lungs, it's not going to fill up with blood properly, and therefore the blood pressure can drop and eventually the heart will stop beating altogether because there's no blood getting back into the heart because the lungs are squeezing the heart so much. So it's two things that kill people in asthma. The first is the lack of the oxygen getting into the lungs because they're overexpanded and unable to bring any more air in. And the second thing is the increase in pressure that you get inside the lungs, which then squash the heart and prevent it from beating blood around the body effectively. Another great question is, is asthma inherited? And the honest answer to this is, we don't know. It's definitely not simple Mendelian inheritance, i.e. one gene or one mutation that has caused the problem. There are trends towards people in the family having asthma and therefore their children being more likely to develop asthma, but it's certainly not the case that every person with asthma then passes it on to their children. People with asthma often have other conditions associated with them, so they often tend to have atopy. This is allergic reactions to things. They often tend to have hay fever as well. And these are signs that they're just reacting to things in the environment a little bit more abnormally than other people. Which then brings us on to the other part of asthma the other thing that can cause people to develop asthma, and that is environmental factors. And there are a huge number of things that are being looked at, but certainly things like pollution tend to increase the risk of people developing asthma, especially as children. And there's been a lot of good research looking at the fact that there's much more asthma in children that grow up in cities compared to those that grow up in the countryside or somewhere that doesn't have as much pollution. Honestly, there just isn't enough evidence out there to know exactly what causes asthma, but certainly it looks like there's an interplay between the genetic predisposition to developing asthma and also the environment in which someone grows up. Another great question is, well, if patients with asthma have more thickened airways, 
and they're more likely to go into spasm. Do people just continuously take salbutamol? Well, the first question is, what does salbutamol do and how does it work? So you've probably seen people, or you may have it yourself, a blue inhaler. This is the salbutamol inhaler. And the way that salbutamol works is it's very quick onset, but it's got a short duration of action. And so therefore, you see the green graph there. You see that you get a very quick onset, but then it comes off very quickly. So if you were to just use salbutamol, you'd have to use it constantly. So that's not really feasible. And so we use salbutamol as what we call a reliever. So this is if you've come into contact with something that's caused your airways to go into spasm and to cause you to have a mild asthma attack, like, for example, walking out into the cold air, or during the summer if you breathe something with some pollen and you, your airways react to that. Then you take the salbutamol inhaler, which has got a very fast onset, and then it wears off. But that should hopefully be enough for the airways to relax and for you to get away from whatever that thing was that caused you to develop the constriction of your bronchioles, the airways. But some people need something a bit more longer acting as well, because you can't sit there just puffing away on your blue inhaler all day long. You wouldn't be able to get anything else done. And this is why you need another drug that can last for a bit longer. So you see the blue line there on the graph. This is something that lasts a bit longer and therefore causes you to have the airways open up over a longer period of time. And there are a number of different drugs that are on the market. These are just two. The one in pink is something called Foster, and the one in brown is something called Cuvar. They're both steroid inhalers. And what steroids do is they act over a longer period of time, but they take a little while to work. So this is what we call the preventer. This is the one that lasts over the rest of the day, and usually you take one in the morning and one at night. And this keeps the airways open throughout the day and reduces the reactivity of the airways to react to things that may cause you to have an asthma attack. Of course, on top of this, if you come across something that causes an acute constriction of the airways, the bronchioles, then you take your blue inhaler on top. There are other drugs that are longer acting versions of salbutamol, like salmeterol, which can also be used longer term to try and keep those airways open. So the answer to the question is we don't take salbutamol all the time. You take it when you need to and then you use other drugs to try and keep the airways open and to reduce the reactivity of the airways over the course of the day. Those are some really good questions. And please, if you've got any more questions, leave them in the comment section below.